Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. And in today's video, I'm going to be showing you what a bad calculation pack looks like versus what a good calculation pack looks like. And this calculation pack was done by a young engineer. I QA'd it and he eventually updated it so that it looked a, a lot better. So without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so if I'm just given a calculation pack, what I want from it is to be able to fully understand what the project is, what the calc is going to show me. So that's basically going to be your introduction. So we just moved down to the introduction. There is basically no <laughs> introduction. Um, I mean, it just says that there's going to be a new butterfly roof, timber trust rafters, ceiling joists supported on a steel or timber valley beam. So. There's not a lot to that, and I know the project, but someone fresh, basically someone who doesn't know anything about a project, this does give you a brief idea, but I think putting in a very, very simple diagram right here in the introduction would go a long way. It's also really important to explain why we're providing a new roof and why we can't just remediate, because actually the original plan was to remediate the existing roof but having spoken to the client it's more valuable to the client because he eventually wants to sell the property to sell it with a brand new roof rather than selling it with a repaired roof so that's kind of why we went away from remediating not because we don't want to be sustainable but because that's what the client wants that's what he gets okay so moving on contents page whatever okay so now we've got some loading and he's broken down the lows of the roof uh, which is fine um, some of the values are a little bit on the low side but generally it's all right um, we've explained that we've got a live load on the roof and we've also got a live load on the ceiling joist because we're assuming that they might store stuff in the roof space and this is the place where he's decided to put the spacing of the timber members or the trust members. And I've made a note here to say that it's a bit of an odd place to state your, you know, the centers of your timbers. Because I actually missed this originally and I was going through his calculation when I was reviewing it. And I could never see where he stated the centers uh, until I kind of went back just to double check my own QA. And that's when I spotted it. So I thought it was a bit of an odd place to state this. Okay, so then he's gone on to do a calculation for a snow load, which is probably really, really excessive. I probably wouldn't even bother um, for something so small. Here he's got a, a plan of the layout. So this is what he kind of described. He's got the roof trusses and I don't think it's strictly right to call them trusses because basically they're common rafters with a ceiling joist so they're kind of independent um, and you've got this central valley beam because it's a butterfly roof and I've made a note here <laughs> it looks so much better if he used a straight line which eventually he did and I'll show you later so then he's gone on to analyse this roof truss and this is a problem, a common problem I find with younger engineers and they overcomplicate something. And I feel that had he done a hand calc, like started off as a hand calculation, he wouldn't have made this mistake by trying to overcomplicate it. So basically he's trying to analyze this roof, this butterfly roof here as one system, okay? And he's done this in, uh, in TED's 2D analysis, which I think is really clunky. But here we go, it's like spout all this analysis. Um, and my comments are, how did you define the loads that you were putting on to the model? You know, it's not, it's not clear from this calculation because it's basically just an export of the analysis. It doesn't explain anything to me as the reviewer as building control if they were to read this. It just doesn't explain anything. And, you know, it's, it's this is, to me, nonsense. It, you know, it's, I really had to dig really deep to really try and understand and backtrack what the loads were 
or how we define the loads. We'll just keep going, there's a lot of output. <clears throat> and here we go, my comment is, if everything is pinned, why is there a hogging moment? So there shouldn't be a moment here, okay? I went back into the analysis and I saw that everything was pinned, so something was probably not right. And I think eventually he agreed that he made a mistake. And that's another problem. If you'd done this by hand, you wouldn't even bother doing this. Um, so this is a very, very overly complicated way of analyzing a very, very straightforward roof. So we just keep going. And this is just generic design of the timbers that he's using, nothing special. It's just spout from Ted's. Again, there's not a lot of, exp well, there's no explanation of what is going on. So it's just reams, pages and pages of just output. And, you know, unless you are an engineer, you're not going to really know what's going on. And he is des designing the valley beam. Again, no real explanation. You kind of really have to read through everything to kind of get an understanding. My preference is even if I'm doing you know, a test design, you know, a software design, before I spit out all the output, I would write, it could be just a sentence or two, just explaining what this output is gonna show me and what are the key inputs, like loads, spans, you know, how, what, how long was the, or how, how wide was the floor it was supporting or why it's supporting. Very, very simple to put in and it saves a lot of time. So again, loads aren't defined. How are the loads you know, derived into your line loads? What was the spacing? Because at this point when I wrote this comment, like I still didn't know what the spacing of the timbers were. So again, reams and reams, pages of calcs, and that's basically it. And I think I noted here that I don't think these forces were even correct. I went back into his analysis and I didn't, I'm pretty sure that those forces which he pulled out were wrong. So that's the end of the calc. So I'm going to show you quickly the drawing which accompanies the calc. Okay, so this is the drawing which accompanies the calculation and what's going to be sent out to the client. And this is what's going to be built. The, the contractor really isn't going to look at the calculation. That's going to be for the building control. So the drawing is going to be really important to show what we're trying to demonstrate here and I didn't have too many comments on this um, the drawings itself were okay but it's just a couple of things we missed out from the site visit there was this wall was meant to be remediated and there's no note about what we're meant to do so I think you just missed that bit out he's noted we've got some sheathing here and it's a bit of an odd place to put sheathing you generally don't really want to put it on the inside face um, well you could but it's a bit odd and for a roof this small I my comment was basically it's not even that necessary because it's gonna have some noggins so that's gonna provide a lot of stability it's a small roof so I wasn't really that bothered or you know, that concerned um, more than anything this was a bit of a preference to me I generally don't like to wedge your timbers bang into the web of a steel steel joists, I prefer to pack them out with timbers, through bolt them, and then use hangers. I kind of feel that's a bit easier to build rather than kind of you know, wedging them into your steel. Um, this was a bit an odd post thing. It, uh, I, yeah, I didn't really understand what he was trying to get out. And I think fundamentally, I wanted him to come up with a scheme. I didn't, I, so I fully understood the project um, and I really assumed that he understood the simplest way to design this whole roof, which would have been common rafter, common ceiling joist, spanning onto a steel beam or a timber beam. Um, so it's basically three designs which you got to do. Rafter design, ceiling, uh, ceiling joist design, and a steel, steel beam design. So it really, should have been really, really simple. But I think he overly complicated it by thinking it is some sort of truss because someone mentioned a truss at some point and he had this idea that this should be a you know a truss um 
and it just got really really out of hand for such a simple roof it was like 40 or 50 pages worth of calcs and it was just a bit just a bit overly over the top done because it wasn't thought through enough at the beginning okay so let's just quickly have a look at the revised set of calcs after i qa'd it he went back and redid the calculation um so got rid of the sort of 2d analysis truss thing which he was originally thinking about um so this is the changed introduction so you know it's a lot more explained um there's a lot more of a story to it which is kind of what i try to tell people is write your calculation as if it was some sort of story um have a flow to it so here he's explaining you know, we did investigations what we found and um, there's degradation to the party wall bricks about needs to, to be remediated and then he explains you know the roof and what we're trying to do so that's a lot lot better um goes on to to the loads um happy with that uses a straight line for his dimension so the whole thing just looks a lot neater a lot more professional and it was just such a, a simple thing like if you were doing this by hand i would not expect of you to draw your diagrams freehand you know use a ruler make things nice and neat and tidy you know because we are professionals let's you know keep it nice and tidy so then the first thing designs is the rafters common rafters simply supported simple same with the ceiling joist very simple and you you know it's got your reactions got your line loads perfect so you've got your um, udl your line load from your rafters and from your ceiling joists and it goes straight into the valley beam design and the first thing we can do is do the timber option and then we'll move on to i think the steel option so we're giving two options to, to the contractor if the timber option is going to be too deep for them on site or if the client doesn't want such a deep member then we can go with steel We've given them the option, it literally takes us like a couple of minutes just to do two options. Um, so this is where we're showing a bit of value, you know, if we can give them a couple of options, no harm in doing that, they can pick and choose. And we've condensed what was a ridiculous 40, 50 page calc down to 10 pages. And this is what it should have been from the beginning. And I truly think that if you had done it by hand in the beginning, you would be looking for the simplest way of designing it because you're trying to do it by hand. Once you've started it by hand and thought of your method, if you needed to do a 2D trust analysis, then you would go ahead and do it. But the mentality is to get things done quickly and efficiently. And the fast, fastest way to have done this would have been exactly this way, is to get your UDLs from your rafters and UDL from your ceiling joist and then design your beam and it would have been that simple and it would have taken an hour to design and an hour to write up and then a couple of hours to, to draw it but this took a day and a half maybe you know because i he had, did it originally thought about it i qa'd it he drew it redid the design and you know, made the changes to the drawing so it took a lot of time however he's still young he's still learning so this is fine i gave him the freedom to try and come up with a scheme scheme idea the design or the analysis part of it wasn't quite right and hopefully he'll learn from this anyway i hope this was interesting to show you what overthinking can do and where you know being experienced or inexperienced can play a major part in what you're designing but hopefully every day is a learning day hopefully he's learned from this and we're just trying to make things easy and we're trying to make money so we want to spend adequate amount of time but we want to be efficient as well. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Please remember to like and subscribe and I'll catch you on the next video. Cheers.